Hi, my name is Joel Ivey, and this is Hiro. He's my dog. He's actually a part of the office culture here, so he's here quite a bit. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to set up the bevy. But first, I want to do a little bit of an intro about our company and why we developed this product. It was actually started about three and a half years ago by three co-founders. They were all friends. They went to MIT and Rhode Island School of Design, and it really started as a mission to try to eliminate the use of bottles and cans because they're actually quite wasteful. So they developed a point of use system so that you really didn't need a single use bottle or can to get a delicious beverage. So Bevy actually produces flavored, sparkling, and still water and multitudes of flavors. And you actually can customize how much sweetener you want in there. And the other nice thing is that anything in there is gonna be healthy for you. We don't use any high fructose corn syrup any of the sweetener will be either zero calorie or it'll be organically derived. So every bevy is connected to the internet so we can tell exactly how much of everything is being used, CO2 and flavors, and also do remote troubleshooting. So right now we're in a lot of schools, corporate offices, universities, and also hot hotels and gyms, and we're rapidly expanding. We're doing that because we provide really excellent customer service, both to you guys and to the end customer. We provide a lot of real-time analytics so that you guys can have as much data as possible so you can know exactly when things are going to run out. We hope this video is helpful for you in knowing how to set up the bevy. And now we're going to go get started. Come on, Hero, let's go. Hey, guys, today we're going to teach you how to install a bevy. First thing that you're going to have to do is take the bevy off of the pallet that it comes on. Each bevy will come shipped on a pallet. You'll have to unwrap it and then take everything off of it. First thing that you'll do is just take all the shrink wrapping off, then take the chiller carbonator off, which is on, in its own box right here, then take the bevy and wheel it off of the pallet to the place where it's going to get installed. And we're going to show you how to do that right now. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take off the strapping. And you can use scissors or any knife to do that. Then you'll just take any utility knife and just cut off all the shrink wrapping, just like that. It's best to have two people to do this, just because it takes a little bit of maneuvering. Then we're going to take the carbonator off of the pallet. It has straps on, so it's easily movable. If you have some sort of ramp, it's best to use it. If not, no big deal. We have one here, so we're going to make use of it. You can use any type of ratchet set to, to take this, the two by fours off. We have a drill that makes it a lot easier. It is very loud, though. Kick that out. Then you want to wean the bevy back. All right. And rock it forward and roll it off. Bevy comes on wheels, so it's easily movable. You can just move it right into place. Thanks, Dan, for your help. Appreciate it. Enjoy the bevy, guys. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what tools you're gonna to need to use to install the bevy machine. First thing you're gonna need is a handy water bottle. Ideally one that's one liter or 32 ounces. A Nalgene is preferable if you have one. A small flathead screwdriver. Utility knife. Tube cutters to cut the plastic lining. A filter wrench or a strap wrench if you have one. And then a ratchet wrench with a 3 8 inch socket on it. And then this is the same, you can use this as well. This is just a screwdriver ratchet. 
crescent wrench, uh, 10 inch. Pliers. And then lots of extra 3 8 inch tubing, just so that you can have as much of a water line as you need to connect the bevy. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the keys off of the chiller carbonator. They're just located right here in a little bag. You can just rip that off. It's just a set of two keys. And the lock is right on the front of the door. Just twist and open. Slide the door open. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this brace off of it. You're going to need a ratchet set with a 3 8 inch socket. <clears throat> there are four nuts attached to each end. You're just going to loosen each one. and then you can just collapse the brace. You really don't need to save this in, unless you're actually gonna transport the machine. Um, the only reason that we use this is just for stability when it's gonna be shipped. So you can just save this either inside the machine or just take it back to your shop and use it at a later time. So now you're going to want to take the box that's in the bottom of the machine and just take it out. You want to have your knife available just to cut it open. So inside the box, you'll have your drip tray, which goes on the door of the machine. One spare filter. Pressure regulator that goes on the CO2 tank. Two power cords. A pressure reducer that also has a 3 8 inch line on it. Some spare 3 8 inch line. An antenna that goes on the back of the machine. And then a spare John Guest valve. So now we're going to want to take this spare filter and put it inside the machine. For this, you're going to need your filter wrench. First thing you're, you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unwrap the filter from the plastic. So you want to unscrew the filter housing. You can usually just do this by hand, but if it's really tight, you'll want to use your filter wrench. Just take that off. Take your filter, just drop it in. And screw it back on. Again, just do it by hand until it's hand tight. And then you'll just want to turn maybe just a quarter turn just to tighten it so that no water will leak. Just be careful not to over tighten it because if you do, you can actually strip it and cause some damage to the filter housing. So now we're going to put the drip tray in the door. First thing you're going to do is just close the door. And lock it. Take the drip tray, decal side out, and slide it in. Okay, so now we're going to turn the machine around, and we're going to put in the power, and we're also going to put the water line in. 
So you can easily move the machine. It is on wheels. Just going to turn it around like so. The water line is uh, right down here. It's a 3 8 inch quick connect fitting. And there is a plug in it. You're just going to take that plug out. The way that you do that is you just press up against this grommet and then pull the plug out. You can save that for later. We're going to take our water line. And please make sure that it's off when you do any of this. You don't want to get sprayed with water and take a bath. And you just plug it right in. Make sure that you feel that it's nice and snug and that you can't pull it out. That way you know that's fully secured. Now we're going to take the power and plug that in. You're going to take one of your power cords. You're just going to unwrap it. And then plug the female in right in here. There's also a power switch, which is located right, right above there. And we're just going to plug it in to the nearest outlet. Okay, so we're going to move the machine. It's pretty easy to move. It's on wheels, so you just turn it around. Put it into place. And you're going to want to have your water shut off available, so if you can, just have this right next by, right next door. And we're going to unbox the carbonator now. So you're just going to want to use your utility knife and just cut these straps off. The box actually sits on a small pallet underneath, so you can actually just lift it up like so. And you can just take any of the packaging and put it inside the box. All right, so we're just going to take the rest of the packaging off. Carbonator. So this is the uh, the front of the chiller carbonator. Uh, this unit actually has a large ice bank that's located inside the machine, and it keeps it, it refrigerates it and keeps it right up around 32 degrees. So it, it's right around freezing, keeps the water very cold. There's also a sparkling water reservoir that it chills the water and uh, injects the CO2 in there. This side will actually face out towards the front of the machine. And there is a, a cooling setting on the front. It goes from 1 to 7, 7 being the coldest. It's factory set at 6. It should always stay there. If you go a little higher, it can actually freeze the line. So you want to make sure it stays right at 6. Just to ensure that it's correctly set, or if it somehow changes, you just want to take a flathead screwdriver and just adjust like so and just make sure it's right at six. There's also an overflow tube. This is for the ice bank. Once it completely fills in, it'll actually start to drip and fill up this tube. And right when it goes to about this, uh, this fastener here, you want to cut the water. The other side, which goes to towards the back of the machine. You have three inputs. They're all 3 eighths lines. The top one is labeled ice bank fill. So you're only using this for the installation, and that's it. Once you fill it up, you just take this plug and just put it in there, and you're never going to use it again. The second one is for the CO2 line. And then the bottom is for the in water. So now we're going to prep these lines. First, we're going to take the CO2 line, which comes in the kit. So it comes pre-cut. 
And you just put it right in there. And then the water line is actually located inside the machine. Uh, we're actually going to have a, a separate ice bank fill line that you can use. And you can actually just pre-cut it. I would just cut it exactly the, around the same length of the, of the uh, CO2 line. So I don't know, about four feet or so. And you just want to plug it right into the ice bank fill. Right here. OK, so now we're going to put the power cord and install it inside the machine. And we're going to take the chiller, and we're going to put it inside the machine and fully install it. So there's a power outlet located on the left side of the machine. I'm going to take the male end and just put it right into this outlet. And then extend the cord and snake the female end down. And we'll just leave that there for now. OK, so we're going to move the chiller into place, and we're going to hook up the ice bank fill and all the other connections. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the pressure reducer, and we're going to stick it onto the end of the filter. So this is a stem that we're just going to put right on. So this is our in water valve. And the first thing we're going to do is actually use this line to, uh, to fill the ice bank. And then we're going to take the in water line and plug that line in as well. And what we're going to do is essentially we're going to switch these two lines when it's inside the machine. OK, so we have our three lines here. The top one being the fill ice bank. That's connected straight to the filter. So you'll need to keep track of which one is which. The middle one right here is our CO2 line. And then the bottom one is our water fill line. So I'm going to take the CO2 line and just loop it in right through the sandal so I know which one that one is. And then I'm just going to hold the other one. And we're going to transport this right inside. You just kind of want to straighten it out. And remember that the side with the overflow tube always goes out. Make sure that both handles are situated in the upright position, like so. And also that your power cord is, is out of the way when you do put this in. Now be careful, because this is fairly heavy. You want to lift it up. And just slide it back. Next, we want to take the power cord and just plug it right into the side of the unit. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. And we're ready to fill the ice bank. So you want to take your water source and just turn it on. So it's immediately going to fill the filter. And then water should go right into the ice bank. And you'll hear the water start to accumulate. As soon as the water comes in and just starts to fill up, you want to cut the water. This should take probably, depending on the water pressure, one to two minutes. And it's already starting to come out, so you can cut the water. So our ice bank is completely full.
Next, you want to take the existing ice bank fill line and disconnect it. And usually what I would do is just snake it around. And you can essentially just put it in into the overflow tube. And you want to take the, the other water line that you have set aside. Just plug it in. And remember your CO2 line. We're just going to set that up here for now. So we know where it is. Next step, we're going to take the, the out water and the out sparkling lines and connect it directly to the machine. So you'll notice that there is a white regulator that comes down from the wall of the machine. That's going to connect to your out sparkling. It actually says out soda. So it's flagged right here on this line. It says out soda. Just plug that in. Make sure it's nice and snug, not crimped at all. And then your other line, we'll say out water. Push that right in. It should look somewhat like that. There's also an out ambient line, which will be plugged. You can just kind of tuck that away. We don't ever use that. We only use the, the two out, the out water and the out sparkling. So now we're going to set up the CO2 tank. In order to do this, you're going to need your crescent wrench. You're also going to need flathead screwdriver. And you're going to need your regulator that comes in the box. First thing that we're going to want to do is you're going to take off this washer. It's a nylon washer on a rubber band. You just take that off the regulator. It's actually very important to, uh, to always have one. That way you get a nice good seal on the regulator. You don't want the, uh, the gas to escape out there. So this is the uh, nylon washer, and it's going to go right, right inside the threading there. And we're going to connect the regulator to the tank, and we're going to hand tighten it. Whatever you do, make sure you do not open up the tank until we're, we're completely done here. You don't want gas spraying out, and it's very loud, especially at a customer site. We're going to take the crescent wrench, and we're just going to tighten it. Again, you know, make sure you don't tighten it too much. That's probably one revolution is, is just fine. So the regulator, um, the bottom gauge measures how much gas is left. The top gauge measures the, uh, the, the pressure. So we're going to actually set the pressure outside the machine because it's, uh, it's actually easier to do that. There is a little uh, valve at the bottom. So flip that valve so that you can actually open up the tank. So once the valve is open, you can see that the pressure is preset to 60 PSI. We're actually going to bump that up because we can and because people want spar really sparkly water. So we're going to set that to six bars, which is approximately 87 PSI. So anywhere between 
85 and 90 PSI, or six bars. So you can see right here, if you just take your uh, screwdriver and turn it clockwise, you should be able to dial it up. So we're gonna go right to where it says six bars, and then we're just gonna tighten that up. Just make sure that that is nice and tight so that it's not gonna move anywhere. And then when we transport it back inside the machine, just turn it off again, just for a safe measure. Now we're gonna take the tank and move it inside. First you wanna take the line and just kinda of have it handy. So the tank just goes right in the left, left hand side. It sits on a plate, which actually measure, measures the, the weight at all times. So you can see exactly how much gas is in there. And then you're gonna just buckle it in. So, and then you're going to take your CO2 line and we're just going to plug it right into the regulator. And you just want to push it up, make sure it's nice and tight and tug on it, make sure it's not going to come out at all. At this point, we're going to leave the tank off. So make sure that it's off and also just release any pressure that might be in it. All right, so now we're actually gonna put the flavors in and I'm gonna show you how to do that. There is a rack with four shelves on it and that's for the four flavors. And it's actually listed in here, um, bib one, bib two, bib three, bib four. So that's how we're gonna, how we're gonna put them in. It really doesn't matter what, what order you wanna put them in. All right. So the flavors come in boxes like this. And I chose four of the more popular ones. Uh, this one is unsweetened lime mint. And um, they have a perforated edge on them that you actually just kind of tear open. It's actually a little bit difficult to, to get it open. So a lot of times I'll just take a screwdriver. Don't ever use a knife because you can actually just cut the bag inside. So just take the screwdriver and start opening it. And then you can just tear it open. Then we're gonna take the box, load it on shelf one. And then we're gonna take our bag that's on the shelf here and it's got four connectors these are all bag and box connectors and they're all labeled so this one is bib one so it's on the first shelf here set that aside then we're going to take the spout and just kind of pull it out a little bit there is a cap on the spout you want to Pry that cap off, like so. And you can just throw the cap away. Then you're gonna take the connector and it's kind of a crescent shape. And make sure that's uh, fully disengaged, like so. If it's engaged, it actually kind of, you push it in, like so. And then it's disengaged. They should all come out like this, but in case they're not, you just want to push it out. And then you want to kind of take that crescent shape and slide it right over the spout, like so. And then you want to push the connector in. The easiest way is just to kind of take your palm and just push it in two clicks. So one, two. In case you need to uh, change it, 
essentially the way that you're going to do that is you're going to take the take the line so take your finger and place it right on the bottom of the line here and then your other index finger on the top and then press your thumbs up against the circle and pull out two clicks so the one is all set now we're going to take the next one Unsweetened cucumber. I'm sorry. Unsweetened raspberry. We're gonna load it in. Same thing. Let's take the spout out. Take the cap off. We're gonna find. Bib two, make sure it's disengaged, slip it on, push it in two clicks. And you just do that for all four. So here's our unsweetened cucumber. Take the cap off, find bib three, slip that on and push it. And then last one. Unsweetened lemon. I'm gonna take that, slip it on, and then push in. Then you just want to make sure and just double check, make sure each one of these is fully engaged. Sometimes they can kind of pop out just a little bit. So you just want to look and feel, make sure each one of them is fully secured. And that's how you load in all four flavors. Okay, so now we're actually going to turn the water on. We're going to turn the carbonator on. We'll turn the CO2 on and we'll turn the machine on. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the water source. And right now it's closed. We're just going to open that valve up. So you should hear water rushing in. This is where you would check for any leaks. Make sure that all your fittings are good and you're not seeing any water drip out. Looks like so far we're, we're doing OK. No water leaking out. Next, we're going to go in the side of the machine of the carbonator. We're actually just going to flip that switch on. Because we haven't powered the machine on, it's not going to turn on yet, but it will once we turn the power on the, on the machine. So we're going to turn the CO2 tank on. First thing we're going to do is open up the tank. Just turn it all the way on. And then remember that the valve on the regulator itself is actually turned off right now. We want to turn that on. And you'll hear the air just rushing in. So now we're going to put the antenna on the back of the machine and turn the power on. So we're going to take our antenna. It's in a little plastic bag. Just take it out of the bag and fasten it onto the back of the machine. So this really just screws in. It's pretty simple. We just don't put it on there during shipping because we don't want it to snap off. And then you can just kind of put it up just to save a little bit of space if you don't have a lot of room. Or you can adjust it however you want to. And the last step. OK, we're going to turn the machine on. We're going to hear the sound. It's going to start to fill up. You're going to hear a little bit of a grinding sound, and then I'll kind of subside. And then we're going to go ahead and program the, uh, the tablet. So the tablet should uh, turn on at this point. You'll see the Bevy logo. So when you turn the 
machine on, you're going to get this screen where it has uh, four mystery flavors. So you have to program those in. The way that you program them, it's actually secret back end. You click on the ingredients button, which is right down here, the blue watercolor. And then you can just tap on any one of the mystery flavors. And then you want to press and hold onto the X for five seconds. And that brings you to the servicing panel. It'll list out four different flavor options. And what you're going to do is just click on the box in the middle and select your flavor. So it'll have a drop down menu with all the flavors that we, we currently offer. And the first one that we put in was unsweetened lime mint. Second one was unsweetened raspberry. And the third was unsweetened cucumber. And the fourth was unsweetened lemon. The last thing we're gonna do is set the uh, CO2 tank. You'll have to put the tear weight and Depending on how big the tank is, the tear weight it will actually increase. So you'll definitely want to check on the bottle and see how much it weighs. In this case, it was a 10 pound tank. So we're going to list it at 14 pounds. And that's just the, the weight on the tank itself. And then you just click on replaced. And then replace the filter as well. Next step, we're going to um, set the Wi-Fi network. You just press on the Wi-Fi settings, and it'll bring you to a list of Wi-Fi networks that you can see, and you just click on any one of them, whichever one you want to connect to, and just enter in the passcode. And it'll say connected. Now we want to go back into the servicing panel, so do the exact same thing. This time it lists out all the flavors when you click on the ingredients tab. And you just want to click on any one of the flavors. And again, press and hold for five seconds. And now everything's showing is green. We have uh, Wi-Fi and all our flavors are selected. Last thing we want to do here is prime each line. So you want to take your water bottle, put it in the refill station, and then you want to hit the prime button. So once your, your bottle is in the refill station, you actually want to put the, the bottle pretty close to the nozzle because it does spray a little bit. And then you want to hit the prime button on each one of these for 30 seconds. There will be a countdown and you'll just wait until it doesn't it goes down to zero. And then you just want to continue that step for all four flavors. Once you select all your flavors and finish priming, you want to go to the info tab and you want to pay attention to the, the top portion where it says tablet ID. And you might want to write this down so that you can actually put this on the dashboard and assign it uh, to, the, to the customer that you want to that you just installed at. This is the actual identifier that you're going to be using to um, put this machine on the dashboard. So make sure to write this down. And when you have access to that dashboard, you want to select the tablet ID for, for this particular machine. The last thing we want to do is we want to start incubation. So what this does is it sets a timer so that the machine just cools down for a couple of hours. It does take a, a little while for the, for the chiller to fully cook, kick on and, uh, and cool down. So you just hit the start incubation button and it'll default to three hours. So that just locks the customer out from being able to use it until it's really ready. If you need to get back into it, it's very simple. You just tap in between the numbers and you get out of the incubation period.
So now we're gonna do a taste test to make sure everything tastes good and it's all calibrated correctly. We're just gonna take our bottle, make sure it's all empty. And you can really go through all the flavors, but for this, we're just gonna go and taste uh, the sparkling water just to make sure that's nice and bubbly and try the unsweetened lime mint. So, nice and bubbly. Tastes good. Plenty of lime mint. All right, so that's it. If you have any questions, just feel free to send us an email at support at bevy.co or you can call the number listed on the sticker. We'd be happy to help you out if you have any questions. And thank you so much for your continued support. We really appreciate it.